Welcome back to Pro Photo Supplies Top Photo Gear. In this grossly overdue episode, we will be tackling the camera industry's number one trend. Stealing, just kidding, retro design. We will be looking at three cameras, the Fujifilm X-E2, the Panasonic GX7, and the Nikon DF, and decide which one is most retro. In the spirit of retroness, we have kidnapped a man from the old world and are making him review the X-E2. In 2012, Fujifilm gave us the X-Pro1, a rangefinder style digital camera with impressive image quality thanks to its X-Trans sensor. It quickly became known as the poor person's Leica, although there really wasn't anything poor about it. Now with the X-C2, Fujifilm has further refined their X-Series of interchangeable lens cameras. It is a machine of classic beauty on the outside and modern brilliance on the inside. So the Fujifilm has film in the name, uh, so you know it's a retro camera. So I'm told that the uh, X-E2 is reminiscent of an old Leica, which, you know, begs the question, why not just get yourself a new Leica? Like this guy, the Leica M Monochrome. The Leica M Monochrome, so named because it only shoots in black and white. It doesn't get much more filmic than that. Eat your heart out, Fujifilm. I'd hesitate to call it really a retro design, more of a timeless design. Uh, Leica embracing the status quo. Autofocus, no. Video, no. Wi-Fi, need not apply. Unlike the Fuji, the Leica is a real rangefinder, offering both the framing and extremely accurate uh, focusing through the viewfinder. Uh, rather like Clever Lang from the Rocky movies, uh, come down the store, I'll show you what a real camera looks like. The images taken with this camera, even more specifically the images I'm taking right now, are some of the best black and white images you're ever going to see in your life. Because the M Monochrome doesn't have to demosaic a color array like a standard digital camera, it results in sumptuous detailed black and white files. And since the idea was to find the most retro camera today, it seems like the uh, black and white is just a further benefit. Besides, color's such a crutch. This way you got to frame a shot, just like the old days. You would think for $8,000 that Leica would have ironed out every last kink, uh, perfected every last facet of the M monochrome. But the shutter sound is not exactly like his magnum opus. But having said that, neither is the poor screen, lack of weather sealing, poor battery life, uh, nasty calibration out of the factory, the annoying habit of having to take off the bottom to get to the battery in the card. So is the M monochrome right for you? I doubt it. The M monochrome is a camera made exclusively for the masters. Luckily for the rest of you, this is Fuji XE2. It may not be a Leica, but it's a beautiful machine and it doesn't sound like my family's Sunday dinner every time you press the shutter button. Where the Fuji is trying too hard to be something it's not, the Panasonic GX7 is its own unique camera. It isn't afraid to do things a little differently. It is well made, compact, and doesn't sacrifice modern conveniences in the name of being old fashioned. It also happens to be magical. The GX7 harkens back to Panasonic's glorious film camera days. It also offers a whole new level of flexibility. Check this out. Articulating screen? Huh? Haven't seen that before. What you really haven't seen is this. That is a photographic equivalent of yoga. So don't be surprised if in the photographic future you see photographers walking around like, Oh hey, branches, they're my inspiration in life. I love everything about them. The GX7 is the first Panasonic camera to include built-in image stabilization, which is rad. But if they really wanted to be retro, they would have just included a tripod. Woo! Check this out. It's not a Velociraptor. It's a built-in flash. 
The GX7 has a video mode. It's called motion picture, which is a rad retro term. However, there's nothing really retro about 1080p video, nor is it unique. If you find a camera without 1080p video, let me know, because that's weird. Anyway, if you do make a video, hopefully you won't need sound, because this doesn't have a mic jack. The GX7 offers Wi-Fi and NFC, which isn't retro, but it is cool. NFC stands for Near Field Communication, which means as long as you're near a field and you have this camera, you can communicate with it. Hey field, what's the chlorophyll count? That's what I thought. The GX7 is not a retro camera. Pretty much the only thing retro about it is that it's available in silver, the color of old things. But maybe that's not so bad. After all, it does have some pretty rad features. It also offers 20 megapixels of awesome built into a camera that can fit in almost any bag. It's great for amateurs, enthusiasts, and professionals looking for a high quality travel camera. The Nikon DF is instantly recognizable to anyone who remembers Kodak, Watergate, or baseball. But it doesn't just look great. It's loaded with features like a plethora of on-body controls, a large bright optical viewfinder, and professional level weather sealing. When it comes to features, the DF can't quite make up its mind. On one hand, it represents a return to pure photography and as such has no video mode. Points. But on the other hand, it maintains virtually every function of Nikon's ubiquitous retouch menu, including fisheye and uh, color sketch. No points. But another feature that purists will appreciate is the support for old manual focus non-AI lenses. Functions the same way as on this F4 by using this movable aperture lever here. But then there's a 39 point autofocus system, which means you don't get a split image focusing screen to assist with manual focus. Any photographer pure enough to use a manual lens on the DF is probably just gonna shoot film. As far as image quality goes, you couldn't really ask for much more. The DF uses the same 16 megapixel full frame sensor from one of my favorite cameras, the D4. But in a camera designed for slower paced, methodical, pure photography, why didn't they just opt for the 24 megapixel sensor from the less expensive D610? Although lower resolution files do have their advantages, you fit more images on a memory card, the low light performance is stellar, and nobody's going to notice the difference anyway. When I look at a classic camera, I always wonder why did we ever stop making them like this? But then I pick one up. The DF feels about as comfortable in my hands as this original F, which is to say, not very. But in that regard, Nikon has succeeded in creating a truly retro machine. Pure photographers will appreciate the dedicated mechanical dials and switches. It's like opting for the six-speed manual, even when you know the modern dual-clutch automatic is smoother, faster, and more efficient. It's just so much more satisfying to do things yourself. Are you a pure photographer? Do you carry a gray card in your pocket for those times when the sunny 16 rule just won't cut it? Do you refer to sunlight as God's light? I do, and that means for me, the DF is the only retro camera worth using. Information and cows just blessed your life, and now you're a better person. And it's your turn to decide which camera you think is the most retro. We want to hear your unpolished opinions in the comments section, and we'll see you next time. Maybe.